What do these numbers mean? There's a power of 10 in between each one of those numbers, like the Richter scale of an earthquake. So every time you drop one number, it's times 10. So 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, or every single time that you take in a soft drink, especially a cola of any kind, you are 100,000 times more acidic than if you drank the same amount in pure water at a seven. In fact, it will take you 32 glasses, not of pure water, but of the coral mineral water to actually neutralize each and every cola that you drink. Now, I don't know when the last time that you had a cola was, but I'm sure you didn't run right over and take in 32 glasses of water to neutralize that. Okay? And yet, that's what we would have to do. The people say, well, I, I don't drink colas. You know, I drink 7-Up or Sprite or root beer or something else. Great. Instead of being 100,000 times more acidic, you're only 85,000 times more acidic than pure water is. Okay? So soft drinks are actually killing a whole generation of our people. And people say, well, wait a minute. I drink diet. Well, whoop de doo Actually, that's the worst thing that you could probably take in. If you'll notice on our screen up here, you'll find that artificial sweeteners, specific, specifically aspartame and Splenda, are more acidic than the actual drink itself. And so the next time that you actually partake of a diet drink, you are creating more problems than you're actually overcoming by taking in a diet. So the idea behind this is to inform you so that you have this idea of what the pH scale is and how it works. So that as I refer to things as we continue along in our discussion here, you will understand how important it is. But you know, you could take everything that I just discussed here, the lactic acid, the soda pop, the artificial sweeteners, the white flour, the white sugar, and put them all together. All together, they don't reach the, the acidity level that stress does. Stress is the most acidic producing thing that is in our lives. And yet people think that they're handling stress very well. Hey, how are you doing? Oh, fine, I'm, I'm doing great. You know, my wife divorced me, my dog died, I wrecked my pickup, but I'm doing just great. No, if you could see the chemical changes that are taking place within your body like I do, you would realize that this stress has dumped you into an acid pit, and now you've got to get out of that, or you're going to suffer some health problems. Okay, well, keep all of this in mind as we go along. Because if I were to take a drop of blood out of you and put it up on the screen and look at it through a dark field microscope, this is what I would see. This is pure alkaline blood. Remember I said it has a very narrow range that you have to maintain that with. If you look at this, these are erythrocytes. Their job is to carry oxygen to all of the other cells in the body. And so if they are loaded with oxygen on that membrane and all of the other 76 trillion cells get their fair share of oxygen, again, your metabolism is high, energy level is high, and your immunity is extremely strong. But as you start dropping down in that pH scale and become more acidic, an, an interesting change takes place in these red blood cells. And they begin to relo together. They stick together. Now, as soon as this happens, a change also takes place in the amount of oxygen that they can carry. If I were to take one of these uh, relo blood cells out, and measure the amount of oxygen it's carrying on its membrane, along with one of the free ones that we saw in the previous slide, we would see that these rouleaued uh, erythrocytes are only carrying 20%, 20% of what a normal red blood cell can carry. Now that means that you've cut out 80% of the oxygen going to your, the cells of the body. Remember that one-fourth of your blood supply goes to your brain. Therefore, as soon as you drop down and your body becomes reload and acidic, the brain is one of the first things to suffer. That's why you feel muddled in the afternoon. You would kill for a four o'clock nap. It's mainly because you are depriving your brain of oxygen as you go through. So this is one of the first things we look at and are able to tell. What's something else? Well, immunity is extremely strong, as I said before. When you're alkaline, your immunity is very high. When you're acidic, it's very low. We know that 150 different kinds of diseases or chronic conditions are the direct result of calcium deficiency. 
You say, wait a minute, what about, what's this calcium? Well, calcium is the largest buffer within your body. It's the most alkalizing mineral that we can have. That's why our bones are made of mostly calcium. So immunity is affected as we drop in the calcium level, therefore dropping in the pH level. So we take another little blood sample and we look at that and we say, whoa, look, yeah, this person is acidic. Look at these blood cells. Now you can see a red blood cell up here just for comparison. That's a brand new one. It hasn't had a chance to get uh, acidified yet. We make new uh, red blood cells at the rate of about two billion a minute, but they only last for about 120 days. So this is a brand new little baby right here. Now right next to it, you can see two white blood cells. The white blood cells, and there are seven different kinds of them, have major immunity jobs throughout the body. Now, they should be two to four times the size of that red blood cell. Obviously, these are not. So as you become more acidic, these white blood cells shrink in size and they become inactive. Now you can have a, uh, a blood test taken and they can put it through the machines and say, oh, you got plenty of white cells, no problem. Yeah, but if they're inactive, your immune system is depressed. So when you become alkaline, now look at the difference. Here's an alkaline blood system. Look at the size of that white blood cell. Now it's huge, it's active, your immunity is strong. Okay? So another big thing about uh, getting the body acidic and staying there. There are certain conditions <clears throat> that will be extremely exacerbated if your body remains acidic. One of those is candida. Candida is a yeast form that lives in our large intestine. Now it's, it belongs there, we need it. It has a lot to do with the finishing products of digesting carbohydrates. But if we end up, for some reason, getting a lot of antibiotics, such as we've gone through an operation or whatever, um, we're dealing with skin uh, conditions as a teenager, if we have a lot of white flour and white sugar within our diet, if we uh, are extremely stressed, all of those will allow that candida to escape from the large intestine, travel through our bloodstream, and then set up a home uh, someplace throughout our body, usually in a weakened part where we either genetically are weak or we've had injuries or that type of thing. And then it begins to reproduce because it turns from a yeast form to a fungal form and now it steals food from the other cells and it gives off toxins that stimulate our pain receptors. And that's why I said earlier, candida is one of the, it's not the cause totally, but it, again it exacerbates uh, fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome. Plus, it muddles the brain. We're looking carefully at this for things like Alzheimer's, for instance. So this is another kind of condition that can develop if we are acidic. All right, let's take a look at the bones, because everybody knows that calcium makes up the bones. Well, yes. In fact, this is a, the inside of a shin bone. This bone is perfect. It's got all of the calcium, all of the boron, all of the magnesium. It's got everything in there, because this is where the body stores our alkaline, excuse me, our ionic organic minerals. Now, as I said before, calcium runs 170 different functions around the body. It's responsible for helping the body uh, overcome or stopping 150 different diseases. Magnesium runs 300 functions around the body. So where does it get it? It takes it out of the bones. Osteoclasts break down the bones, free the minerals into the, into the body, and we use it for all of these functions. And then we're supposed to replace this with high organic, ionic, whole food sources. Because that's gonna go back into the bones and it's going to replace what we took out. So, that's the idea behind it. However, it's like a bank account. If we take more out than we put in, we're gonna end up with a condition that is called osteoporosis. Same area of a, uh, of, of a, of a shin bone, but you can see now all the support material in there is gone. This is osteoporosis. Now if you look at it, you can see why the bones become very brittle. But this is not a picture of an 80-year-old woman, or a 60-year-old woman, or even a 45-year-old woman now where most osteoporosis is beginning to uh, develop instead of in the, in the later years. This is actually a picture of a, an osteoporotic bone of a 36-year-old man who drank six Cokes a day. So 
because you are highly acidic, the minerals come out in a desperate attempt to keep your body acid-alkaline balance. 